Hello and welcome to the second episode in this tutorial on how to make a planet defense game. In the second episode we will be creating the player class and making it move properly around our round planet. So to get started create a new class by creating a new file and saving it as capital P player.hx include it in our project with package semicolon and write class player again with the capital P extends click spot because we want it to appear as a visual on the screen and because we're using flex bite, we have to import it so just write import flexel dot flex spot now we will create the new method so write public function new now normally we accept an x and y argument like that for our initial position and we pass that into the super method so that hex flexel can set up a sprite at that location however we actually want to know the angle that the player should be relative to a planet and the planet that uh, our player should be based off and should be based on so just put underscore angle <coughs> and underscore planet just like that now what do we pass into the super method because that wants an x and a y well for now we can just put zero zero um and because later on we will write a method that takes an angle on the planet and generates an x and a y position and then we can adjust our x and y position that doesn't really matter about this just yet um but we do have to remember the angle and the planet that we get passed in. So right there, angle, and that's of a type float, with a capital F. We're using a float because some angle operations work better with floats, and their planet, which is of a type planet. Now it doesn't know what the planet is yet, so we can just import that with import planet. And now we can remember it from our constructor arguments. So angle equals underscore angle and planet equals underscore planet. And now let's actually create the graphic because we won't be drawing an image uh, of, a <coughs> of a player yet. We will be doing that in the next episode. Um, we will just be using the make graphic method. So just write make graphic with a capital G, 16 pixels wide, wide and 16 pixels high and because we will use the color class import flexor dot flex color. Now in here we can write flex color dot green and that will make our player appear like a 16 by 16 square. So now that we have done that, I think it's important that we actually follow <coughs> our player because if it's moving around the outside of this planet, we want it to always appear in the center of our screen. So to do that, we will use flex G. Again, we have to import this. Import flex all dot flex G. So flex G dot camera, which gets the current camera, and then follow this. So it follows this player, so this sprite. Now we will override the update method. So just override public function update. And we will just call super.update for now. Now we want to write another method, and that's calculate position. So if we just put calculate position as a function here now let me explain what this does um, and I'll put it as a comment too uh, this function works out our whites x and 
y position based on an angle and a planet. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what it does. So here, we don't actually know the x and the y. We only know the angle and the planet it should be on. Um, but with the calculate position method, we can work out that x and y. So this will take a little bit of trigonometry, but it's not that advanced. It's pretty much just cosine and sine. So we can just say x equals math.cos like that and that contains math conta is a class that contains um, the more complex like trigonomic math functions and then in here we will pass it um, the angle and we have the angle times math dot pi whoops I need a capital M there math.pi divided by 180. So basically, we get the angle, which is in degrees, and we multiply that by um, math.pi divided by 180 uh, to convert it into radians, because our cosine method accepts radians. So now that we've done that, and we've got the cosine of the angle, we have to multiply it, by, this may get a little bit confusing, but don't worry. The planet dot planet radius. Now, at the moment, the <coughs> the planet class doesn't actually have a planet radius variable. So let's do that now. Go back to your planet class, and just above where we have the new method, just put public there planet radius equals 100, which is half of our 200 pixel wide planet image. Uh, and then we want to add 8 because uh, half of our player width is 8. And now, now we've got that relative position, we have to offset it by the planet's position because the planet will probably not be at 0, 0. Uh, so let's, and it it would really even have to be offset even if it was at zero zero. So do planet. So we want to add the midpoint, the x, and then we want to subtract the eight to counter this. But it's important that you have the plus eight and minus eight here. Now we can duplicate this line, but change all of the x's to y. And we have to change the cosine operation to sine, because of course sine is for the y-axis. Now this would work fine, and it would work out an x and a y position based on an angle and a planet. However, we want to also rotate our image, um, or our square in this case, so that the bottom of the sprite is always facing towards the middle of the planet, because otherwise uh, for instance, if we have, you know, a stick man, the head will always point up, even when it's on the bottom of the planet, if you can picture that. So let's just also add to our comment, um, it also rotates the spot to face the planet. Um, now we can write angle equals... Now we will use the flex angle method and we have to import that from flexor.util. So write import flexor.util.flex angle. And here we can say flex angle dot angle between, which is a handy helper function that gets the angle between two spots. And then we can say the planet and this player object and true uh, plus 90 because we want to because of the way flex angle returns angles we want to add it to 90 so it works with our sprites angle so this is good we've um, 
we've made a couple of functions, but now we want to calculate the position every time um, we update. So just put here, calculate position. Now let's add this newly created player object to our scene. So in your play state, we can, under the planet variable, write their player is of the type player. And here we can say player equals new player. And we will pass it the angle. So let's just put it on a... Um, 10 degree angle, actually 30 degree angle, and we will pass it the planet that we previously created up here to put it on, and now we add it to the scene. And let's see if this works. Oh, type not found flixel dot flix color. I think yeah we have to go flixel dot util dot flix color. Easy fix. Uh redefinition of variable angle in subclass is not allowed. Alright, so basically it's saying angle here um is already defined in flex splite as the angle that we face the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, we're putting angle here as a number referring to the angle relative to the planet. The angle is also used by FlixSplite in Hexflexel to work out how rotated it should be. So instead of angle, we will just change angle with angle from planet. And then here we uh, can, you can paste that there. Here, here. Now we want to leave this because we do want to change the actual sprite angle here. Now if we save, hopefully that'll work. Uh, here we go. Well, I, I think we've pretty much got it. But that doesn't look like it's on a 10 degree angle. I think it's on a 100 degree angle. So I think we just need to uh, subtract 90 from that. I think. Um, try that. Right, yeah, sorry about that. The issue was just, um, it was in fact this. We just need to add 90, not subtract 90. <laughs> it was just offset in the wrong direction. Uh, now if we run it, we should see I um, change this to be an angle which is 0. And 0 should now correspond to Oh no, wrong direction. We want it to appear at the top. Uh, let's just quickly change that to minus 90. Now, if we run, we will see that it should appear at the top of the planet. There we go. Now, to test this, uh, we can actually just put in our player method uh, angle from planet plus plus. All that's doing is every frame it's increasing the angle by one degree and that should make it rotate around the outside. Now this is how we're going to make the player controllable. So of course the left arrow on the keyboard signifies Oh my gosh. Yeah, we increased it way too fast. So let's just put plus equals flex g dot elapsed. We just went way too fast. 
Uh, now you should say we walk the player all around the outside of our world. Now you might notice that it's just maybe a few pixels off perfectly on the surface and we want it to appear like it's on the world not barely touching it so to do that just down here we can um, say player um, dot player planet radius sorry minus four and minus just four pixels so it puts it squarely on the surface of the planet now if we run we will see that we've got a player which is currently just a red square on a planet and it can walk all the way around it. There we go. And so obviously it's just a green square at the moment but uh, in the next episode we will make it have animations and able to move left and right with the arrow keys. So thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial has been followable. I'll be continuing to make tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching.